This is something I've been wanting for almost a whole year now, and it's finally here, and I'm so excited to be doing an unboxing and a little bit of a review of the Soundbrenner Core. So this literally just came in the mail just now uh, and I'm just gonna unbox it really quick before I have to run and teach some lessons. I'm gonna try it out for a day and then I'll be back to do a full review. Um, but without further ado, let's get into this box. So there's a little pull tab here that's really easy to remove and it's kind of a, a cool box idea where you can then slide that cover off. It looks really nice and it's a uh, pretty high quality material. Um, there's some very nice uh, texture and stuff on this box. Uh, and then it looks like it opens this way. Oh yeah, it's a little magnet, that's nice. Um, and then you open it up, you get all the tape off, and it opens like a book to the actual device, just like this. This is a very nice box, um, but I'm more interested in what's inside the box. Uh, so it looks like there's some instructions here, and then all of the accessories are behind that. So there's the actual watch itself here, a watch band, um, like a normal wristband. There's a body strap or an arm strap here. Um, it looks like there's two of them, so you can maybe yeah, make it longer if you want. So maybe this is like for the arm or this is for the whole body. Um, and then there is a charging cord, a strong magnet, it says. Oh, this is the um, contact tuner. So you can put this onto like a guitar or something. So you have the magnet so you can use the actual device to tune things. Um, and then there's some earplugs as well, which is really cool because part of what this does is it's also a decibel meter so that you can hear if you're in a loud environment and it sort of warns you if it might be damaging to your hearing. So they also give you some earplugs to, to help out with that, which is fantastic. Um, if you don't know what this fancy device is in general, it's actually a vibrating metronome so you can wear it as like a wristwatch or like I said an arm or body thing and it vibrates rather than clicking which can be nice because it isn't so obnoxious and it can also be nice if you're playing in a group or playing something loud where you're not able to fully hear the metronome at all times you can feel the metronome at all times. So I really like the packaging of this. I like the box so far uh, and I can't wait to take it out and charge it up and try it out and then I'll get back with a review of how it actually works and how I like using it. All right, I'm back and I've been using this for about a whole day now. So let's get into some of my thoughts and sort of a little bit of a review of the Soundbrenner Core. So far, I've really been enjoying it. It's a very intuitive design. It's pretty cool. It has like a uh, raise to, to wake thing so that it displays the watch face, which has the like charging and the time and the date, which is nice. That's sort of like your main home screen. Um, you can see that the screen is pretty nice. Um, it's not like a full touch screen. There's actually just two little like strips of screen up here and down here. So that's all that will ever display on it because this middle part is all about tapping. So you can tap in the metronome and you turn the metronome on and off by tapping that. On the side here, there are a couple buttons. Um, it's sort of your, the bottom button is like your enter button to go to the next thing. And then the top button is back button. And then on the side here is for plugging in the charger. So we're on the home screen and then you click in and it goes to the app screen. And there's several apps here. There's the metronome, tuner, decibel meter, uh, timer, stopwatch, and then settings. Um, so you can see, and the way you navigate this is actually by turning the dial here, which is pretty fun. Um, this dial works very nicely. So let's go ahead and look through these, starting off with the metronome. So again, you press that enter button to enter into the next screen. And then it has the tempo marking, the BPM, the time signature, and then the subdivision. 
And then also at the bottom, you can adjust how strong the vibration is. This also pairs with the Soundbrenner metronome app. Um, so you can change a bunch of settings in there with how strong the vibration is as well. So once you're into the metronome, it actually stays there. Even if the screen goes black, it's still like in the metronome app. So you can still touch it and tap in your tempo whenever you need to. Um, the instructions say to like tap with two fingers. And I think that's just to make sure that you're getting the surface area. It sort of feels like the sides don't really tap, but it's more like in the middle. But whenever you tap in the middle, even just with one finger, you can tap and it works. So if you just tap a steady beat, it changes to whatever that tempo is. And then to actually start the metronome, you double tap and then it vibrates. It's really cool, you can program whatever colors you want for it to vibrate with and this ring will, will vibrate. Um, I just turned that off because when I'm playing the clarinet and this is on my wrist, um, I can't really see the light vibrating. Also, a light for a vibrating metronome is kind of useless because for a sound metronome, the visual of the light can sometimes be useful. If you're playing really loud and can't hear the metronome for a bit, you can see the visual cue. But with this, that's not a problem because it's vibrating. So the light looks super cool, but I'm not sure if there's any good functionality for it. If anybody comes up with, with good functionality for that, then let me know in the comments below. But it's super easy and very intuitive to use. You just double tap and it starts vibrating and you can kind of hear the vibrations or by the microphone. And that gives you the tempo and then just double tap to turn it off and you can uh, tap in the tempo and you can also press the enter button to start adjusting some more settings. Um, and then you can use the scroll to get to a very specific tempo or to gradually work up a few clicks at a time if you're doing your slow metronome practice as you should be. Um, you can change the time signature. It's kind of interesting. The time signatures only go to um, eighth notes for the like the meter. So it's either four, 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 two. Um, actually, let me double check. Yeah, it does have four, two. And it could also do like a uh, whole notes per measure. Um, but it only goes up to eighth notes. So you can't do like 316. Although you could just do three, eight, and it's basically the same. Or you can do like I always do and just always leave it on one four, um, because that gives you pretty much everything you need. One other slightly weird thing with the subdivisions is you have the option to do uh, like offbeat subdivisions like that, but it still vibrates on the beat as well. So it's the same as having the like two eighth note subdivision, even though it's technically just the offbeat. So that's a little bit funky. Um, if you do have a different time signature, uh, say like 4-4 four, four instead of 1-4. It's really nice. It pulls up those extra bars at the bottom and you can actually set that to be whatever accent pattern that you want. So maybe you want a super strong beat on the downbeat, a uh, weaker beat on beat three, and then no beats on two and four. So maybe you're practicing your internal subdividing and making sure you can subdivide through the measure. That's a really cool feature that you can do. So you can set up any rhythm that you want with that. Cool, let's go on to the next feature, which is the tuner. So again, I just pressed the back button to get back to the app screen scrolled over to tuner, and then we're gonna enter into the tuner. So the tuner is really cool, but not super cool for clarinet players, unfortunately. It is nice, you can pop off the uh, watch face from the band, so if you're actually wearing it, you can just pull it off. And it's a contact tuner, so it's meant primarily probably for um, like guitar players and stuff where you can just clip it onto your tuning peg or it comes with that little magnetic uh, stick on thing that you stick onto the headstock and then this magnets onto that. And it's great when you're playing in a, a loud place. Um, it only will pick up the vibrations from your instrument and your guitar because it's a contact tuner. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for clarinet because there's nowhere on the clarinet for it to really stick to because um, silver isn't magnetic. Um, 
I didn't try on my nickel keyed clarinet, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't stick to that. And even if it did, it wouldn't really be in a convenient place to look at. Um, so hopefully Soundbrenner can make it so that you can just play into it using the microphone um, because there is a microphone on here because that's what we're gonna get into with the next feature with the decibel meter. Uh, but the tuner is pretty accurate. I have a bass guitar that I tested it on and it seemed to match what the Tonal Energy app said. It also, I uh, attached it to my stand just to see if the music stand would resonate enough as I was playing for this to pick it up. And it actually did, but it only did it on some notes, presumably the notes that the, the metal of the stand would resonate at more. Um, and that was still pretty accurate. So if you just want a few notes to be in tune and you have a metal stand that this will stick to, then that could work. But let's go back uh, to the decibel meter because the tuner isn't the most useful for the clarinet. Um, so the decibel meter is next. We're gonna enter into that. This one's pretty cool. It just sort of tracks the general decibel range. Um, in the Soundbrenner app, it has a couple suggestions for recommended ranges and the amount of time for exposure to that. It also has an alarm where if you're exposed to a certain volume for a certain amount of time, it'll buzz and be like, hey, you're probably damaging your hearing at this point. Uh, luckily, I haven't had that come up yet. I was at a big rehearsal last night with the North Shore concert band uh, and it got pretty loud. I checked it out just to see and I got up to 111 decibels, which was quite loud. My loudest clarinet playing was around 95, 90 to 95 decibels. So that shouldn't, according to the app and according to like health recommendations, um, you can go for about two hours a day at that decibel before you start doing damage at the 90 to 95. Um, I think that that's about what it was. You'd have to check in the app to be for sure, but somewhere around there. Um, but the alarm hasn't gone off yet. So presumably my hearing is safe. The next feature is the timer, which is actually pretty neat. Um, it is super easy to set. You just go in and then press the enter button again to edit and you can scroll around to set however long you want the timer to be. Um, and then you just tap to set it. Um, I find that the timer can be really useful for when you're practicing, actually. I typically use the Modacity app for practicing with to keep track of my time of everything, but this could be another really neat way to time things. And it just buzzes on your wrist when the time is up. So I did even use it for cooking a bit last night uh, and found it to be really useful. Easy right there to set and also easy to notice when it was going off because it wasn't just one beep from my oven in the other room it was just right there on my wrist and it vibrates all the way until you shut it off so I can just leave it going and I won't forget about whatever's in the oven uh, just because the timer went off and then the last exciting thing is the stopwatch which isn't super exciting it's basically the same idea where you tap it to start and then it goes and then you can tap it to pause and then you use the uh, scroll wheel, I believe, to reset it, yep. Uh, and then the final category here are the settings. There aren't a whole lot of settings in here. It's just airplane mode, uh, the Bluetooth, just to show that it's connected. Um, you can unpair from here to unpair it from the phone. Um, wipe the device, this brings it back to factory settings, uh, and then just like uh, serial numbers and like what firmware number it's on and things like that. So that's a pretty in-depth overview of what the actual device does. I wanted to give a super in-depth overview and review of all the, the features of this because I feel like I've been hearing about this and interested in it for like almost a year now and there hasn't been that much information out there. So I wanted to make a super thorough video for anybody who might be interested in this. Um, going on from the actual device itself now, I wanna talk about some of the external parts of it and, and the other features of it. Starting off with the wrist strap. The strap is really cool. Um, they're very easy to interchange. There's just these little um, rivets on the back that you can pull off and then slip it out uh, and put a different strap in as you please. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you could just get any watch strap and make this work because it doesn't have like the normal pins like a normal watch strap would. 
but you can get any of the sound burner straps and replace them yourself extremely easily, which is pretty neat. Um, the strap is comfortable. It has two um, of these things to like hold it on. This one's fixed in position and this one slides around. It does make it a little bit cumbersome to get on and off at times, um, but I presume they have both of those for people who may be like drummers or something who are really moving around a lot with this, so everything's really nice and secure. And I actually like that as a feature. On my last watch, this thing uh, actually broke off and I had to use a rubber band. Um, so having two of them, I think, will provide a little bit more support and security there. Um, I was surprised when I was looking at it online, I was a little concerned that it might be really, really chunky on the wrist. But you can see it's not too bad at all. I have decent sized arms and, and wrists, um, but it feels very comfortable and it's very, very thin considering all that it does. Um, so I'm pleasantly surprised by the size and how this feels on my arm. It also comes with two kind of body straps. One I showed in the unboxing bit is just a small one that can like go on your arm or it even fits on my leg. And then there's an extension to go all the way around your body. Um, I tried those out, they work really nicely. For me personally, I'll probably just only use it on my wrist um, because the, the body strap is, is kind of a pain to get out. It's easy to use, um, but it works totally fine for me on my wrist. I really love the charging for this. Um, it's super easy to plug into the side and you can even still be wearing it and just plug it in. You won't be able to move very much because you'll be plugged in obviously, um, but it's still accessible even when you are wearing it if you just want a quick charge. Um, it's also super neat. The ring light around will uh, light up red and actually sort of fill up the percentage that it's charged. And then as it charged, it fills up and once it gets completely charged, it turns green. Um, not super important functionally, but it's really, really uh, cool and I, I like the aesthetic of that a lot. Speaking of charging, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the battery life on this. So it actually did come 100% charged out of the box, which was very nice. I used it all night yesterday and about 24 hours and it went from 100 down to 30 percent um, but that was with a pretty heavy use during my practice session um, with it continuously vibrating for about 30 minutes straight um, during practice uh, and then probably for the whole practice time maybe about an hour of it on and off um, so it went quite a while with a, a lot of vibrating again I did turn the flashing light off um, so I think that probably helps to conserve battery some it did go down about 10% just overnight um, the decibel meter is sort of always checking to make sure that it's not too loud so it can give you that alarm notification uh, so you may want to turn it off while you're sleeping um, just because it's draining down the battery sort of constantly and 10% overnight is is kind of significant for a watch that you want to be going for for a long time and the final nice thing that was included as sort of an external thing is the earplugs that came with it. I tried them out a little bit. They're pretty much your standard earplugs with the little rings around it, um, but it's a very, very soft material, so it feels quite nice to, to put in actually, and I could imagine wearing them for quite a long time with a good amount of comfort, and they really did reduce the noise a lot as any earplugs should. There wasn't anything too fancy about the noise reduction. Um, I have some some very nice uh, like custom fit earplugs that I use sometimes that balance everything and make it sound normal, just softer. These weren't quite that fancy, but they're very nice and very comfortable and would be great for loud things like sporting events or even some concerts where you're not so interested in hearing the intricacies of all the frequencies very clearly. Now for a couple other random things that I just happened to notice with this. The first is that I was a little concerned with the way that it pops off. It's, it's super easy to pop off and, and super easy to go back on. And seeing that in videos and stuff, I was a little concerned about it falling off while it's on your wrist, but it actually locks in really well and it like does not come off. You have to give it that little bit of twist for it to come off uh, and it comes off easily then, but otherwise it's definitely staying on, which is really nice. They've done a great job engineering that feature of this. 
You could probably see though, as I was going and, and demonstrating some stuff, that the screen itself does get pretty fingerprinty. Um, I find myself wiping it off a lot just because I'm super OCD about fingerprints on the screens. If you're like that, give this video a like because I know there's others of you out there. Um, but it's it wipes off pretty easily and I guess that's something you'd expect with something that has some glass or, or touch uh, functionality to it. Um, the other thing too is the strap itself. This is just the super basic silicone strap that it comes with, but it has these grooves on it and sort of notches in it. And I have found, I don't know if it was more when it was just new and there was still some like packaging stuff on it, um, but I find that the strap kind of like wants to collect dust in those grooves and gets a little bit dirty. We'll see how that holds up in the long run and if that becomes bothersome, but that's just a, a small detail with the, the actual strap itself. Now the final thing that I want to talk about before I go over a couple little quirks and a sort of overall conclusion to this review is the actual vibrating metronome functionality uh, in itself. That's sort of what the big thing that this is all about. Of course, Soundbrenner had the Pulse before this, which was just a vibrating wearable. Um, this adds the functionality of actually being a watch and adds the tuner and decibel meter and all that other fun stuff. I really actually liked the vibrating with the metronome. I did a one full practice session with it and really used it a lot and tried out playing some different scales and different pieces with it. And it's actually pretty fun and enjoyable. I love that I don't have the like obnoxious click about the metronome. I live in an apartment, so sometimes I feel bad practicing and when my wife's home, I feel bad like being loud and obnoxious and I feel like half of the loud obnoxious part is the metronome clicking away all the time. So this completely eliminates that. There is a little bit of a buzz like I demonstrated, um, but it's super small. You probably can't even hear it uh, even though it's going right now. Um, so some Somebody in the other room or over the clarinet playing, there's no way that they're going to hear that it's actually buzzing and hear that obnoxious click from the metronome. As far as my experience playing with it, again, like I said, I kept it going for about a half an hour continuously on my left wrist. I could notice it in my fingers. I felt my fingers vibrating a little bit on the instrument as I was playing, but even with it going for that length of time, I didn't have any issues with it becoming bothersome at all. So for me personally, it was totally fine. And again, within the app and within here in the watch too, you can adjust how strongly it vibrates too. So if you need it to be more so you can really feel the beat or less if it seems to be like vibrating too much for you, then it's really cool that you can adjust that and find what's right for you. The other thing with the vibrating of the beat, it was interesting, and I think this is mostly just because I need to get used to it more. It felt like the, the beat was a little more elastic and, and not very precise, as precise as like a loud click. I like my metronome to have a pretty sharp, short sound, but the vibration is sort of more like a bzz, bzz, rather than like a click, click, click. So it has a little bit more space to it. So it's easier to sort of like fake it around and be on the front edge or the back edge of the beat, but still sort of feel like you're with the vibration. I'm not sure if this is um, really an inherent flaw with this or if it's just me needing to get used to it. I think it's probably more that I just need to get used to it because it still happens consistently and you still can feel a good center to the pulse. It's just sort of a, an interesting quirk to working with the vibration rather than an actual audio click. There were times though where I felt like it was very nice to actually glue into that and it almost made me concentrate on the subdivision of the beat more. And I think that's part of what the idea of a vibrating metronome is good for is that it makes you really feel the beat and, and concentrate on it. So it frees up your ears to just be listening to the music that you're making and it makes this more ingrained so when you're working without the metronome you're used to feeling that beat for yourself. So the final thing I'd like to wrap up this video with is just talking about Soundbrenner as a company a bit and some of the things that have happened with this. So I first heard about it probably in January of 2019. And at that time I heard that it was going to be shipping in April and it was on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Um, April came and went and it still hadn't 
been shipped or manufactured yet, even though they had reached their, their funding goals, I believe. Um, it went all the way until December were when the first ones were shipped, and then I didn't get mine until just yesterday, uh, which was earlier this week at the beginning or almost middle now of January. So Soundbrenner has definitely had some issues with the manufacturing and production of this. I'm not sure if it's an issue of just being too hopeful with their deadlines or some other internal issues that happened. I do know there's some videos on the Soundbrenner YouTube channel about some things that were happening with the manufacturing of this. And I definitely respect them for waiting until they had a very good quality product before they started shipping, which I think is great but it did take way, way longer than they said it was going to. And with this, there is supposedly going to be a firmware update that allows you to sync this with your phone and get notifications with text messages that will actually read across the screen so you can read your text messages, which I think would be a really cool function. Um, and that was supposed to come out in December of 2019, but as far as I can tell, it is not here yet. Um, and actually I did check on the uh, Soundbrunner website with their FAQs and they said it is not out yet, but they are working on it. So again, there's another sort of deadline that they promised, but didn't have it out by. So I guess my recommendation to Soundbrenner would be don't say things are gonna happen by a certain time if you don't know they're actually gonna happen by then. But on the other hand, I totally understand what it's like running a company and I respect them for really making sure that these things are quality before they come out. So that's a just a little bit of something to think about if you're interested in this. I would say, however, though, I um, got it actually as a Christmas present from my wife, um, and she got it still when it was uh, on Indiegogo, so it was for a little bit of a discount, but it's right around the $200 mark for a really nice piece of equipment that is super helpful in practicing um, and a really fun thing to use and has many functions with the actual watch, just a normal watch, and having the functions of the metronomes and things like the tuner built in. And I am hopeful that eventually they will have a firmware update where the tuner will work with the clarinet um, using the external microphone because there is a microphone built into this um, for the decibel meter, so I imagine it should be able to tune things. So I think it really is worth the money um, if you want a fancy gadget to practice along with. I found that it made my practicing more fun and more interesting and got me excited to practice, which is always good when you can find things that get you excited to practice. Uh, so I think it's a, a good deal. We'll see how well it holds up. Um, it seems to be quite nice quality, so I'm, I'm hopeful that it'll hold up for a very long time and, and really be worth it. So I hope you've enjoyed this super thorough overview and review of the Soundbrenner Core. I'm so excited that mine is finally here and I can't wait to start using it more in my practice and more in my everyday life. Uh, the one last thing that I didn't mention that I'm looking forward to but haven't had a chance to test yet is that I can pair it with other uh, metronome apps and other devices. So I can't wait to start practicing with my Reed Quintet with this, because um, I will be able to get all the apps linked up and I'll have the metronome vibrating and it'll be going through uh, the other devices um, with the actual auditory click. But when everybody else can't hear the metronome because it's the click, I'll still be able to hear it vibrating, which is cool that we can sync it up and cool that I'll be able to still feel it. So thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this, be sure to give it a like. I hope it's been helpful for you and I will see you in another video.